Hey there and welcome to Matt's Garage. Today I'm going to be changing the spark plugs, the coil pack, and the plug wires on this 2003 PT Cruiser Turbo. This is a Dream Cruiser, it's the same as a PT GT. So the coil pack's just there. It's held on with four 10 millimeter fasteners. There's just a single plug and then the plug wires hook up to it, of course. Now on the non-turbocharged PTs, you actually have to take the intake manifold off, the upper intake here. On this one, you don't actually because it's a lot thinner being cast aluminum. The plastic ones are like out here and they block those plugs, so you have to get it up out of the way. But you can actually access all the plugs with the intake on on this car. And I'm also able to access those 10 millimeter fasteners so I can slide that uh, coil pack out from under there. I'm just going to go ahead actually and remove that cover. So that's just, you just depress that, pull up, slide out. And then that gives me a little extra access. And then uh, you just got to get the plug wires off. But one thing we're going to do first, I'm going to be using compressed air just to blow off the area and make sure that no dust and grit can get down in the plug holes as I'm changing the plugs. Okay, well even though this is uh, basic and it's actually labeled, it says one on the coil pack and this is cylinder one, two, three, four, it's, it's pretty basic but still, just just to be safe, always take pictures when you're dealing with spark plugs. Well now that we took pictures we might as well just get the wires right out of here since we're changing them. One thing you want to look for is any oil residue on these that would indicate a leaking valve cover gasket. So far these are both dry so that's a good sign. Uh, there is normally a lock tab, a red lock tab on that coil so I guess somebody's had this off for some reason before. There isn't one so you, if there is one you just have to uh, you know, pull that, they either, like this one, they either come up the end or out the side. Um, I think this one would have come out the side. But since it's out of there, you can just depress that. And there, you can see it used to have one in the side there, one of those red tabs. With that out, you just depress that and pull straight. Again, that's nice and dry, that's a good sign. That's nice and dry, so we don't have any uh, valve cover gasket leaks. That's very good. So just a short 10 on a quarter inch ratchet, and I can get in here and get my fasteners off the coil pack. They're surprisingly tight, and I'm not getting much of a swing there, so I'm just going to try a ratcheting wrench. Might have to use a combination of both to get this off. There we go. Now I can get a bit of a swing on that. There is a guard back here. Well, it's actually a bracket that holds this intake steady, but I don't think we have to get it off. I think we can slide the coil out either side once we get all the fasteners out. There's one of those fasteners, so you can see they go into the valve cover just about a full inch. Quite a bit of threads there to undo. It's a little tighter on this side. I can't get the wrench in there, so the ratchet should work in here. Okay, I'm going to have to use a regular wrench there. There is a little um, condenser right here. So this little black plastic thing here, that's a little uh, condenser. That's what stops interference and static on your radio. It's basically like a uh, static filter. Think of it like that. Uh, it blocks uh, uh, electric current waves um, from your coil, basically. The uh, electromagnetic field that your coil uh, produces, and uh, that'll produce static on your radio if you don't have that to block it. So there's just a single plug on that, so the ratchet gets in nicely on that one. There's that little gizmo, and so you do want to just clean that off as if it was a ground point. Take a scotch pad and clean it off, and it wouldn't hurt to just unplug it from here. We'll do that before we're done here, and just clean that up as well. I'm just unthreading the last fastener here, and it looks like I can pull it straight out, so we'll see. I think they went a little crazy with these bolts. A little excessive to hold down a coil pack. There's the fastener. I'll see if we can get this out of here easily. Looks like you may have to open the throttle plate and just hold that open. Yeah. 
So that is how you remove the coil pack. I'm just looking if there's any cracks in it. Sometimes they get cracks down the corners when they're old. I'm just uh, replacing this one as a preventative maintenance. It wasn't failing or anything. Okay guys, well we'll be using NGK V-Power plugs. They're actually uh, my favorite plug. I pretty well use them in everything. So there's the uh, part number for them if you want to use them in your PT. And they got to be gapped to 50. It says right here, there's normally the spark plug gap on any vehicle is listed on this sticker under the hood. So we'll be uh, confirming the gap. I believe these are pre-gapped, but I do have a uh, gapping tool here just to confirm the gap. And then uh, I have a uh, 5 8 spark plug socket with the rubber insert in it there to get the old plugs out. And I ha have it on a floppy tip extension because you do kind of got to get an angle to get on that plug there. But before we go and uh, actually take the plugs out, one thing I like to do is I drip a little 3-in-1 oil down each plug hole around the plugs. And what that does is lock down any dirt or grit that might be around the plug so it doesn't fall into the plug hole. And it also lubricates the threads as the plugs are coming out so that they don't catch and pull threads. So we're going to do that. Just about uh, five to seven drops in each one seems to be good. Now make sure that this socket's really clean. Uh, blow in it with an air gun, wipe in it with a rag, whatever. You don't want to be dropping grit into your uh, spark plug holes because it goes directly into the engine. So I always feed the socket down onto the plug before I actually get the ratchet onto the extension. It makes it easier to, to feel when you're actually on there. Oh, those are in there good. So there's our first plug. And the plugs are they? They're NGKs. They look like they've been in there for a while. So they're the, uh, I think they're the Platinums. They got the fine little point on them anyways. I don't use that kind. I like the V-Powers. And you can see it's oily and that's just from the 3-in-1 uh, I put down around there. And all the threads came out oily. So that's good. That's what we want it. Whoever put these in really tightened them up a little more than I would have for sure. Let's just check the gap on one of these. They look like they're pretty fresh. Uh, they're only gapped to 40, so somebody gapped them a little bit tight there. Same thing over here. It's pretty well the same access everywhere. You just got to angle it a little to get on there, but not much. Wow, those are tight. Again, they look pretty healthy. There's no carbon on them or anything. Just normal field deposits. We're just going to unplug this so that we don't risk damaging it here. There we go. Always make sure your engine's cold when you're doing this. Never do it on a hot engine. And there we go. So all the plugs look good and healthy a good sign okay let's just get the new plugs out here and uh, what you want to do is always confirm fitment so compare it to the plug that you took out and if for some reason it doesn't match stop what you're doing do not proceed because uh, even if they're different brands they should match from that point down they should be the exact length they should seal in the same manner some of them have washers and some of them have a taper like this one so just uh, double confirm that because if it's longer or something, it could literally hit the piston and uh, take out the piston and ruin your engine. So these are supposed to be pre-gapped to 50, so we'll just confirm that with our gapping tool here. And actually you can see it runs a little past the 50. We're about uh, 52 there. So I'm just going to go ahead and tap the end of that a little bit. Should be enough. And now you can see it's bang on 50. The 50 mark is right in the center of the electrode there. Right, so that plug is ready to go in. So we'll just put it in our socket. Make sure that it holds in there. I just want to see if I can get a shorter extension. It won't, won't be in the way of that. I think for this one, this will be enough to get in there just a 3 inch extension. We'll see. Yeah, just to get it started straight, you don't want any interference. 
Okay, and now that it's started straight, I can switch back to my long extension because this one will get buried in there and then you won't be able to pull it back out. Just make sure they're threading down smoothly by hand here. So I'm just going to use a 3 8 ratchet to torque it. I will uh, put the torque spec, I will put a caption for it, but I just get, give it a good firm pull with the 3 8 ratchet myself. Just like that. There we go. Now it's going to be the same thing for the rest, so I'm going to skip filming that, and I'll get back to you when I'm putting the coil pack and the plug wires back. Okay guys, well the plugs are all in there, all snugged up nice. And I've got this brand new standard Blue Streak coil pack for the car. Okay, I got you in here good and close so you can see what I'm doing as I wrestle the uh, new coil in. Which appears to be slightly uh, larger than the old one. So I'm not actually sure that I won't have to take this support bracket off the back. Maybe I haven't got the angle right just yet. It definitely has to... Go in this way, I'd say. I've almost got it. I've got it down in here, but it's just a matter of getting it twisted the right way now. I think if I can hold the throttle plate open like this. Oh, I think I got it, actually. Yeah, what do you know? Enough gentle twisting and you can get it in there. So you don't have to take anything apart. Okay, and then these, we're just going to put a little bit of 3-in-1 on them before we put them back in the aluminum. What I like to do with fasteners like this is I'll just take the 3-in-1 and I'll put a bunch on the shop towel like that. And then I'll just dip them into that. Kind of cleans up the threads at the same time. So you may have to just move the, uh, the coil slightly out of square to uh, get all the fasteners start it in because the intake's a little bit in the way for some of them so just get them all in before you actually start to tighten them down save you some hassle if that happens to you okay so as I'm putting this back together I'm just gonna clean up this little condenser I'm just gonna use this uh, scotch pad here basically a piece of uh, synthetic steel wool so steel wool would work as well one thing, don't do this over the spark plug wells. You don't want any fibers from this down in your engine. I'm actually going to take this uh, right off. I'm going to unclip it and then I'll clean up that contact point as well. Oh, there we go. So yeah, we'll clean up that blade and that eye. And then we're just going to put some dielectric grease on it. And that'll keep it from corroding again. On older cars, these were the little tin round silver thing about that long, a little cylinder thing with a wire sticking out one end this is the newer version of that and then I just have this dielectric grease here I just need a little squirt there and put some on the blade as well perfect ready to go back on now plug that back in run our bolt through and you can just use your socket to help run the bolt in because it's kind of indented down into the coil housing there and you do want to tighten this down fairly evenly even though it does have steel sleeves in there so that you don't pressure it and break it it's better to just tighten it down a little bit evenly here this is the one that I need at the green wrench to get to and it looks like it will be the same for install so that's pretty much it, just tighten up these four bolts and then I'll get back with you when I put the plug wires on. I'll show you a few little tips and tricks there too. Okay, it's time to plug the coil back in, or the new coil in. And the thing is, it's missing that uh, red lock tab. I have this little pigtail I saved off of another Chrysler harness just for this reason. There we go, a pair of pliers off camera took care of that. Yeah, it should go in that way. So just like that, but before we put that plug on, we're going to go ahead and put some dielectric grease. There we go. Yeah, I'm sure I have it locked now, so we'll push that lock tab in. Let's check your wires for where. Just looking at where it vibrates on the engine here. Okay, well it's time to put wires on here. 
and uh, I'm not sure that these are labeled I don't think they are it's pretty easy to sort out there's going to be too long and too short so with the new plug wires what I like to do is just little dielectric grease on the end there and I smear it right over the end like that and that way it will go right over the contact on the end of the spark plug and it will seal the boot around the plug so that no oil no anything can get up in there no moisture so it will keep that uh, contact nice and clean and and working good for years to come now you just got to kind of feel your way around here as you put these in and you'll feel the boots start on the plugs and then when you push them down you should feel them clip on so I don't know if you heard that audible clip now we're going to go ahead and same thing on this end a little squirt smear it around the same thing again a little dielectric grease over the end little dielectric grease over the end <sighs> nice positive click there that one sits down under there nicer so that's why they have the 90 degree one to hold it away from the throttle that one goes right, right there so if you get a kit that has that 90 degree end in it put it on cylinder number three this is cylinder three this is four and the other far end is one and the other one here is two okay and now this one we're just going to put a little dielectric grease there as well anywhere under the hood especially i like to use dielectric grease so just double check all your work make sure everything's seated normally if you pull back on these just a little bit you can feel the contact in there gripping and just make sure it's move your throttle linkage and make sure nothing can catch if it's gonna zip tie it out of the way so now we just gotta stick this cover back on the throttle here so it just slides in there and then drops in there just like that so there you go guys that's pretty much everything you need to know to change the plugs wires and coil pack in your turbo PT cruiser I do have another video on changing the spark plugs in a non turbo charged PT cruiser it's quite similar but you actually have to take this uh, upper intake piece off which is very simple so I'll go ahead and link that up in the description in case you also own a non turbocharged PT cruiser